Welcome folks, you're about to witness a genuine coaching session, videotaped for your pleasure, where I help a guy with his social confidence. Uh, I'd appreciate if you guys respect him. It's very brave of him to come on and vulnerably share uh, to a public audience like this. So keep your comments clean and encouraging if you can. And enjoy, enjoy watching a real live coaching session as it takes place. Now there are some parts that have been edited, but this is simply uh, to take out some technical issues we had on the call or to reduce some of the pauses from being a bit too long. So enjoy, and as always, let us know what you think. Cheers. And um, yeah, I, I've been, you know, I think I think since the last time we talked, since um, I've decided to um, ask you for a coaching session, mm-hmm. um, I figured out some of the things that gone what's what's kind of like gone wrong and I also um I found I found some solution to it so you I, I have some success mm-hmm. just following certain um strategies and practice or just habits that I can kind of create for myself that kind of um I'll be a little bit more out there just to help me to just open up myself a little bit more. Like when, when you were talking about limiting beliefs, like I don't, I think I didn't really have, I, if, if there is any, it's financial. Uh-huh. Like, cause I, I didn't grow up with a lot and I've just starting to learn. Like I spent a lot of money in learning how to make money. Right. Like, and I'm really watchful, see who is a scam and who is not. Um, so these are usually fi- registered financial advisors and um, I've actually spent money to go there to learn to make money. But I do have limiting beliefs about these things. I think I'm slowly getting better. I do have a bunch of, I, I keep on thinking that I'm not funny mm-hmm. and I keep thinking <laughs> that I'm like, I'm like not talkative. I keep thinking that like I have, I, 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 there's this thing that I keep on thinking that is that um, I think it starts off because when I was quite young, somehow I ended up being the youngest amount all of us to just mm-hmm. kind of get picked on when I was with my cousins. Right. On, and then my dad like um, pulled me aside every single time that I cried. And just like he, for him, like he, like I, I hold no resentment for, for, because he was trying his best with his very limited education. I think he didn't. He only graduated high school. But what he taught me, like things, was like, just, oh, don't cry. You never cried, and um, and he even beat me for it. Like so, what he was trying to do is to get me to become like tough and like not expressive at all. Yeah. But then what happens, that just probably turned into more like an anger issue at the end. And obviously then I, I, I came here when I was 16. Yeah. And, um, and there was a whole bunch of stuff that I have to go through and relearn as well. And I guess I have mates, like, but I, I, I tend to... I tend to think that when I, I and, and it's been a, a long time when I, I'm with my mates um, in high school, like we're playing bands and stuff, but um, obviously because there's a lot of a language barrier, like that would, I would be the least talkative person mm-hmm. and it would be the hardest for me to communicate. And that became a habit and that habit became a belief at the end. So I, I think I've just like recently I'm just I'm just gonna read book about comedy, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read book about conversations, I'm just gonna read books about um, charisma, um, I'm just gonna do everything I can, mm. like bit by bit to like try and gain a little bit of that, in for whatever for for relationship for friendship for business. Like it's, you know, something that I, you know, I've just been hoping for. Um, and I, I, I do get some, I do get some results out of like following these books and um, strategies. I kind of need someone to like, just kind of like take me in the butt and just kind of like keep me on track of like not forgetting these habits and losing 
my ground because I gain it. I always gain it, and 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 I have a problem. So I'm just really disorganized with my keeping on track and staying on track and actually creating a result. I'm good with finding answers, mm-hmm. but I have a problem with persisting and organizing it and making it into a, a result. And probably because I don't believe it at some stage, yeah. probably I'll hit a failure and then I'll start sabotage myself, something like that. Let's jump in there because on a kind of fractal level, I can see that disorganization in the way you tell me about what's going on with what, with you at the moment. So in the, in the yeah. time, you know, in the time you've been speaking, you've covered limiting beliefs about money, about your social life, about organizing your time. Well, once I get, I can actually, it's like being in, I can feel the complexity of that and the confusion of it. Uh, and also this kind of constantly shifting focus. So even in the short time that you spoke, he focused on multiple different topics. So, yeah, I, can so I can't keep a conversation going properly because of that. And that's fine. That's fine. That may be in fact the thing to talk about. That may be something which is just like a, a part of you that has to be managed and dealt with maybe even forever. Or it could be a symptom of something else like say some subconscious fear coming through or some frustration or something along those lines. What I think we need to do is first is we need to get like an anchor in the ground so that we stay focused in this conversation. Yeah. There's kind of three main things that have come out of what you talked about and I want you to choose one for us to talk about. So we have limiting beliefs around money potentially. We have accountability issues and a slow rate of progress with social skills and, and social connection building. And then we have general think, disorganization. I think that um, um, social skills would be your forte, would it? It would be, and I think it's also, it would actually be the catalyst for the others as well. I think if you were to focus on the ability to build connection, I mean, you talk to any successful business person, they'll tell you that it's built on connection. So it's kind of two birds with one stone now. Um, so I'll, I'll give you my first kind of reflection because I hear a couple of things coming through that raise what I call uh, red flags for me. Things that I've heard <laughs> before that are linked to people's problems and maybe the same case for you. One is the first thing that like is blaring in my mind is the why behind your attempts to learn and and practice with social skills and development. Because what I'm hearing is a needy why behind it, trying to get something. Um, and particularly if you're, with your like your background that you described to me, being the quiet sort of ostracized one in the group, trying to fit in by not standing out or not being the one who cries or anything like that that you've been kind of conditioned into, um, that history, and then with your current description of like trying to get good at stuff by reading books, I think the main thing that stands out to me is you're bringing a, a neediness into your social interactions, uh, which A, might be sabotaging your efforts without you being able to see how it's doing it, and B, is going to make it unenjoyable to do. It's going to become hard work, a chore that eventually you lose motivation for. I'm getting better at it than that because exactly what you said, um, it's in a few books that I've read. Obviously, it's all described and explained in different facets and different angles, but this is ex- essentially saying the same thing and also some remedies and solution to that as well. I understand and I am, I am working on that one and I think I've already gone in some results, but then at the same time, I do think what that brings up is that I do think I then also have I, I also flip the switch to another extreme sometimes it's just like I don't give a fuck like and I will just totally like not uh, uh, either either be probably either be rude mm-hmm. I think I'm better these days <laughs> these days I'm way better uh, just being a little bit more mature or, or I will just walk away now that's something I want to point out on 
because um, there's there's a pattern I've seen with coaching quite a lot, and it's it's this pendulum that you described, this flicking back and forth between two extremes. And one is somebody will be trying something that's very hard, and they have like uh, kind of subconscious neediness driving them, and then it becomes too hard. And what the what the brain does in reaction to that much sort of fear and stress and struggle is it just turns off caring at all. And so the person will go yeah, from exactly. struggling to apathy. You know, there's, and it's quite a huge shift. Like, oh my God, I want everyone to like me to fuck everybody. And it's, it's like an escape mechanism by the brain. Like, this is too much stress, stress and pressure. I have to turn the system off. I have to turn off all caring, you know. So that pattern you describe is really common. I've seen that a lot. And it actually, for me, just strengthens my hypothesis about you that the neediness that you're bringing subconsciously into your social interactions is making them very unenjoyable and high pressure for you, which is causing this kind of override to, ah, oh, fuck, I've got to stop caring for a little bit or I'm going to go crazy. Does that resonate for you or am I off track? Yeah, I think, I think that is very true. I think that is... Um... I think I, I, I completely understand the concept and I'm attempting to resolve the issue. And I think um, at least me consciously doing things, I'm catching myself do it and stopping it. Mm. And one thing that I do understand is um, I am starting to enjoy that pressure I'm starting to embrace it. I'm starting to go, okay, well, I have to stay on this level, not drop all the way down and not going all the way up. But like, it, it's uh, an, kind of like an equilibrium mm -hmm. sort of uh, um, interaction kind of thing. Well, I like what you said, like treat everyone as an equal. Um, that worked out for me pretty well. Um, I think from, obviously it wasn't as consistent as you would have encouraged us to do in the workshop but um i'm starting to be able to pick up some of the things that I, I was told to do to exercise and be able to do it and, and I, even if i were to say it in a way that is awkward but i'm not actually you know i'm just genuinely wanted to let you know that you smell really nice <laughs> but yeah but that's what that that that's yeah. I think uh, I think I'm get I get it, but um, somehow um, it's not consistently reacting. It's not wired in yet, and I, I might need some help with that. You know, I think um, there's a really good chance that you're actually doing everything you should be doing at this stage. You're kind of doing everything right but perhaps lacking the patience of someone who is trying to overcome decades of conditioning towards something else, you know, trying to balance those scales. I remember when, when I was going through my own sort of, there's a phase of like overcoming social fears and I just like look for one and overcome it. A lot of honesty stuff. And I just come home so fucking exhausted and frustrated with like the rate of progress I was seeing, so to speak. Until somebody, I think it was a coach at the time, helped me realize, well, you imagine that you've been in hospital for like a year, um, just lying in a hospital bed and all your muscles have withered away and all your joints have seized up and stuff. You're not going to run a marathon right out of the gate. It's going to be this long, slow, like conditioning process. And he said, like, how long have you been like a people pleaser? The begging approval, shy, and all that. I was like, wow, well, it's more than 20 years. I was like, okay, so a couple of months of, of doing something else against 20 years, you're just simply asking too much of yourself in terms of progress. And I get a sense of that and knew that the main issue coming through from you is not a skill problem, it's not even really an accountability issue. You're obviously able to do courageous things all on your own. I think the issue is you're just putting too much pressure on yourself to be further than you are. And this is ruining the enjoyment of it for you. Yeah, and then I get upset and depressed and angry about it. Right. 
which then of course will reduce your progress overall. So you go self sabotage. Yeah, I should be a millionaire by now. <laughs> right. Uh, understand the concept of how to become one, but like every older person that taught me about it says that it's never going to happen overnight. And it is, and 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 even the person that teach me how to play music from the start, I used to have to like learn to stretch my fingers, mm-hmm. stretch that those fingers apart. When I first started, she the first thing she told me is that Rome is not built in one day. Just, just it will be painful and frustrated until your hands know exactly where to go. And I, I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> well, I think this is one of those things that you understand rationally, but are not believing emotionally. And this is a concept I see basically all the time in coaching. If somebody has a rational belief, they can say the words and they genuinely believe they understand the concept. But when they go into real life situations, they feel differently. So someone can say, look, I understand putting pressure on myself doesn't help. It's a form of sabotage and I understand things take time. And yet when you get in the real life situation, straight away, like, oh, I'm not doing well enough. It's like you're two different people. And the problem is because we think we understand it rationally, we don't see that we don't actually believe it. We can say the words, but it's like saying a magic spell without believing in magic sort of thing. It's like, this is not going to do anything. And when I'm in the situation, my emotions clearly tell me I don't believe that because of how hard I am on myself and how much I say I failed and not good enough yet. And I should be this by now, that kind of talk shows there's another belief system in there. So the thing is, I think if you were to enjoy socializing without pressure, all the progress you want to make would naturally occur. Right? You're obviously a courageous guy. You're willing to try new things. That combination alone plus time solves any social issues you have. But you keep resetting because of pressure. You have this, oh, fuck this. Back to depression, back to zero. The rust builds up again. Then you have to sort of start over again, it feels like, when you get back on the horse. Is that about right? Yeah. Just about right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think these days I don't let myself drop all the way down. Mm-hmm. But um, it's been a few years, I hope, you know, until I, I think it was just so recently, like the whole not self-sabotaging, um, just starting to kick in so that I can catch myself doing it. Just, I hey, hate no. Like I'm actually doing well with saving money now. Like this is going into investments. Like don't touch it, <laughs> you know, or, or the same thing with like interactions with other people as well. Or like, or sometimes with my mate, cause like there is one thing I think because of what I told you about, like how I kind of grew up. Um, I have, and obviously because of how my dad taught me, I have this thing of like, if someone does something that pisses me off, there's only a certain amount of um, wiggle room I'll give until I go, okay, well, I'm just going to end this friendship like, because this is not going anywhere. But sometimes I, I think I finally really starting to understand that whatever I see the other person doing, it's not necessarily what, they are trying to do sometimes that's just who they are and i will have to make a decision to let them be themselves otherwise this world will just be copies of me wouldn't it? exactly so one of the things to understand is exactly what you just described is your journey socializing is lots of different things happening at once there's fears to overcome there's limiting beliefs to uh, unveil and disprove there's physical Uh, communication skills to practice there's judgments to be let go of this is quite a complicated in-depth learning process and there's so many elements in there where you can slip into this high pressure self-sabotage we'll call it like tendency yeah so what i think is probably the 
the most high leverage thing that you could do um, or uh, that we could do is to figure out how to utterly reduce and prevent whatever it is that builds up to the self-sabotage. Put it real simple for you. Like it, it's a mm -hmm. thing that happened for me and I see it happen for so many other guys. When you figure out how to make building social skills an enjoyable process in itself, it's fully rewarding without making progress, then the progress is made. Okay. Because there's one, there's two things that never go together really. Stress and fun. Okay, or you might use the word playfulness. To be like naturally funny, for example, you have to actually be carefree. It will just occur to you. And it might not even be funny to other people. You'll just be amusing yourself. But if you're under pressure, then you have to be more like the stand-up comedian with, <clears throat> you know, carefully scripted, strategized jokes because you're in that careful, scripted, strategized mindset. And while they might be laughing, you're, you know, nothing but stress on the inside. True. You see this a lot with stand-up comedians. You ever look at a stand-up comedian and go, that was so funny. Why is he not laughing at his own joke? Like, how does he keep a straight face like that? because he's at work right now. This isn't funny for him. This is work. Whereas you say like a stand-up comedian, say like Billy Connolly, somebody who's just fully authentic and is no longer gives a shit about approval. He'll spend five minutes laughing at his own joke on stage. You have to wait for him to finish, you know, because he's having such a good time. You know, it's just so natural. And this is what I think is happening. You know, you put a lot of pressure on yourself to undo years of maybe even feeling behind socially in some way, like you're catching up to something and you're, you're desperately behind it. You're far, far behind, you know, and this pressure is actually your biggest enemy because it turns socializing into work. Yeah. Well, it is. It's been for years. Yeah. But it's not natural for me. So that'd be the key. If you can get to the point where you look forward to socializing without any attachment to results, you just like, I can't wait to give it another go. Then this will, your natural strengths of honesty and courage and genuine interest in people, all of those things will, will come through for you in spades. I have no doubt about that. There are guys who I work with where I'm like, okay, they actually lack the core strength to even have conversations or build connections. Not just speaking to you now, but I've met you in person, spoken to you. I'm like, all the, all the bits are there. This isn't like some weird dude who doesn't know how to connect with people. You know, you being fully unleashed, you're going to be a unique, maybe even slightly eccentric person, but you're going to have easy connections with certain type of people who are going to think the way you are is just spot on. Now, I know this is more like, again, it's going to be rationally understandable, but not emotionally believed, but you as you are is, Absolutely, in my opinion, enough to make friends and find a girl and all that stuff. The only thing that's going to get in the way is you putting pressure on yourself to be good at it. It's going to get in the way for two reasons. One is because instead of being authentic, you'll be contrived. You'll be trying to be good at it rather than just expressing yourself. And the second thing, of course, is all that pressure and stress is going to wreck this for you in terms of enjoyment. And you're just going to keep dropping off the motivational wagon, you know? You just won't want to. I remember it's like, especially when I was doing pickup and stuff, I'd go like force myself to talk to these people. And then for like three or four weeks, I couldn't talk to anyone. I was like, oh, I just can't. I can't do it. Talking to people just like gave me anxiety. Just the thought of talking to people gave me anxiety. Because there's just so much like stress and pressure in that area for me. It was always hard. I want to try coming at this from a completely different angle. If you think back, if any, examples of times where you were socializing and it was just fun and carefree for you. You didn't have to think about anything, no strategy or technique. You're just in the moment. You had anything like that recently? Yeah. It's, um, today I met a mechanic and um, I'm just talking about trucks. <laughs> we're talking about this old guy that um have um this old land cruiser and we cut the county down 
and he was like dragging the thing backwards. He's backing the car with just a chain on a kauri tree. And this is a hundred year old kauri tree and he's pulling it. And it was moving and because he used to drag it up the hill in the mud as well. He's got a portable um, sawmill. Mm-hmm. And you'll be imagine my boss is like 10 years older than me. He's in his mid 40s. Even he runs around like a little kid. We were all so excited. It was just like, you see this giant tree getting milled down. Well, it was gutted because that tree didn't even have die back on it. Mm. It was perfectly fine. But it wasn't up to us whether or not it gets cut down or not. So it was down already. It was getting it, watching it getting milled and for us was such an experience. And it was just like school trip for us. We were just like little kids. And I think for that and... I was telling you about going to that gig and I kissed that goth girl. Mm-hmm. So those are the two kind of, or maybe at work is the most. And that's why, that's why boxing and like MMA. It's so it's, I'm in my elements. Like even like if it's in a construction site, if we talk about trucks or if we in a heavy metal gig, um, jumping around or I think Zook is all right. It's pretty good. I, I, I have to constrain myself a little bit of being rowdy. <laughs> and and I, I came from a culture that I'm not supposed to be rowdy, I'm not supposed to hug anyone. But, uh, but that is most when I am most in my element, when I, when I'm in a construction site, I can actually bump into someone and that person wouldn't feel I think because they can hold them their balance quite well with a little bit of force bumping into them. Or uh, maybe if I'm in a mosh pit, um, I actually get to friendly, but be rough with someone else. Same thing, wrestling, MMA, jujitsu. I get to wrestle someone else with force, but friendly. Like I know I love that other person that I'm wrestling with because yeah. I'm having so much, I'm like a little kid, I get to have fun with them. But I will genuinely be smiling. But at the same time, I know that wasn't about aggression. It's because yeah. I, as a friendly contesting of strength, and I am always happy with that. So I, I guess these are the most, most of the time when I'm like, well, obviously talking about trucks, just let me be a little boy sometimes. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not, but then I guess now I've learned to like, when, especially when I'm with girls, then I'm not looking for a mum. I think a lot of books that read, uh, that I read taught me the thing. Cause I came here since I was 16. Mm-hmm. So I, that, and my, my father himself is not really good with teaching me these things. I learned it all from bar managers, bouncers, chefs, and now I read books from these successful people, men that writes these books that teaches things. It's, oh, well, okay, actually that is a father pep talk that I've never had before. Mm-hmm. I never gone through that stage from a 16 year old to becoming an adult. But once I've become an adult, I've only learned to con- push myself down to be polite and work and climb up um, in my career and and so on, but never learn to like open up myself. As soon as I read that book about what you were talking about, and you know what? You know how you said uh, when, you, when we were in the workshop, the first thing you taught us was like, when someone asks you a question, answer with how you feel. Hmm. That was from... This other book that I read, um, he, the guy who wrote the book suggested it is from this Karen Healy. He calls it um, a whisper question. And he was teaching exactly the same thing. And someone on the website uh, called ruthlesstruth.com, mm. Karen Healy, teaches that. Um, but he said the boils down to it is like whenever someone asks you a question, try to, even if you might say something embarrassing. Or even if you start rambling on a little bit, instead of answering with a single answer, express yourself freely. It's more powerful to have a habit to do it like that and you will slowly learn to tune it 
to whatever it suits, then um, yeah, like that. And so these are the times that I have that makes me feel like I have to control myself to be an adult, but I still kind of get to have a little bit of being a little kid. And then that's when I don't care. Yeah. Like I will, but sometimes it's really hard. Like I think I freaked out. I could see a tiny bit. I, I'm glad he wasn't. This guy at Zook, just before I left, I kind of, because he looks pretty buffed. I was like, okay, well. So I ran over to him and I just jumped on him and grabbed him um, on his shoulder. Like, this is kind of how I want to interact with people. Mm -hmm. It's actually not acting. Like, I don't care. Like, I, I, obviously, the way I put pressure on another person's body, I would never do it in a way that is hurting. I am not the kind of guy that like pretends to be macho. And then when I give someone a hug, I just smack them real hard in the back, kind of give them a red rash kind of thing. I'm not kind of like that, but like I have learned to like, if it's firm, but um, comfortable, uh, um, it's a good way to build connection. Oh, like, like you saw me giving uh, a hug. Mm -hmm. I was like, that for me helps me to let go of wanting results and progress as well because um, that's kind of how I am. But I also grew up and was brought up in a culture that that is a no no. <laughs> it's kind of conflicting for me. Okay. That gives me some, yeah, that's, that's really good to hear that because whenever you. Whenever you get to a point where you're not enjoying socializing and you just want to give up and, and it's depressing you, I want you to see what you've been doing that's different to what you just described. Okay, because I'm pretty sure if your social life was nothing but the moments you just described, that playfulness, there wouldn't be the sense of, oh, I give up on this. Right? So there's something else that's coming in and, and there's a conflict I hear Actually, there's quite a few going on in you, which I think is, it's kind of like a, a ball of, of um, string that needs to be like untangled. There's all these different little conflicts. And one of them is, on one hand, you're, I think, naturally quite affectionate. And then you're coming from a background where that's really shunned. So there's a shame about it in you as well, which will either re re uh, repress it it will either constrain you or it might even come out a bit weird because it's extreme. Like a week's worth of repression comes bursting out. And this is what, when, when people engage in behaviors that sometimes make other people uncomfortable, it's usually actually, it's quite an authentic behavior for them, but it's coming out extreme because they've been suppressing it a lot, you know, um, or they're just not used to doing it. So they're kind of awkward and, and unpracticed in it. You know, touch is a big one. I find a lot of people are a bit awkward and weird with touch because they really want to touch. And most of the time they really can't because of their constraints inside their head. So when they do, it's just like this huge thing. And once they finally build up a confidence with it, they develop that sort of natural um, repertoire with touch. They just know how to touch and, and how to read people and everything because they have no shame attached to it anymore. Uh, the same with humor. Like my big one was humor. So my, I've just got a very sick mind with, with jokes and stuff like that. And so I'd hold this all in and then I'd finally like whatever, I'd get drunk or something and it would come out. And 75% of the people I'm talking to would be disgusted. You know, they'd just go, oh my God. Because I had no restraint. Like it was all at once, everything I'd wanted to say coming out. So there's, what I think is again, I'm hearing like, What's great is you do have the experience, you know what it's like when you're free socially. When you're not trying to achieve anything. You're just actually enjoying being social as if it's your last day alive kind of socializing rather than trying to get somewhere in the future kind of socializing. And I think that for me is your main conflict is your ability to just enjoy socializing for what it is with no future outcome attached, like just in it now rather than trying to get somewhere. And then there's a part of your brain that's putting heaps of pressure on you for this to get somewhere in the future, to be where you should be, that kind of concept in your brain. 
So every time you hear those words, I should be blah, blah, blah by now, you know what part of your brain's talking. It's that outcome attached, needy pressure part of the brain. Whereas the other part's like, oh my God, that's so interesting. This is so fun. And it's just here now, doesn't care where this goes. It's not trying to make anything happen. If something awkward or weird happens, so be it. It's just a natural outcome of being genuine. It's the price of the pay sort of thing. You know, that part of your brain, I think, it's got, that's the part with your best interests at heart. That's the one where if you spend more time there, not only will you make this so-called progress, you won't even care about making progress. It will just happen and you'll just enjoy the benefits as you go. What I think is you're, you're the same as me, same as anyone really, is we get into a situation, we've got these kind of two brains, this high pressure, high stress achievement brain, which is great for engineering, you know, or learning a martial arts, fucking terrible for socializing. Terrible for making friends, terrible for trying to be genuine and authentic. And I've got this other part of the brain that's something we're all born with, basically, unless we're psychopathic, which is just the, the effortless ability to connect with people who are a good fit for us. Which all you have to do is say what you're thinking and feeling, listen to what they're saying and thinking and feeling. That's it. That's the whole recipe. I think the thing I'm most optimistic about for you is what you need to enjoy your social life is already there. It's just having to share time with this other thing, which creates pressure and stress. So you're in that very difficult dilemma. And I think this is why you think accountability is your problem. How can I be motivated to do something when I'm not trying to get anywhere? How can I want to socialize and practice uh, you know, courageous new things that I've never said before or tried before or use something that might help me express myself better that I've never thought of doing before and so on. How do I do all that without it having a goal? Without it trying to make me catch up to the where I'm supposed to be kind of thing. Essentially what you're missing is this kind of ability to be motivated to do it just for doing it. Does this make sense? Yeah. I'm writing that down is that something that um something that I have not heard before because all the people that I look up to are overachievers. <laughs> or, yeah. or like every single book I read, every single talk I listen to or anything it, it, it will not be as relatable as what you... Relatable in the sense where someone is actually making progress but it kind of releases the stress out of it because most of these overachievers do talk about enjoying it but it's almost like that you are supposed to be strong enough to know how to enjoy it and take the pressure at the same time and and, and the, the the expectation of advances in terms of in terms of coaching it's that you have to go 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 Mm. But this is different. This is this is actually almost a little bit closer and sim more similar to what I learned from this meditation center in Mount Eden. Mm -hmm. um, the guy was explaining um, effort, actually very similar to that. Yeah, it's quite a peaceful way, nonchalant-ish way to look at it. Well, I would not really nonchalant because you still it's very engaging getting somewhere getting yeah. Anywhere. yeah it's um one of the great tragedies i think about the social space and i've known this from you know decades of trying to solve my own social dilemmas uh which were quite a painful for me was that the only, the people who are really good at socializing naturally are never going to write a book because it was never a problem for them to solve they just go about having an awesome social life they don't have any ambition to write a book. you know because they're not the overachievers yeah, I, you know, in my since I sort of worked on my own stuff, I've come into contact with some people where I'm like, wow, that's what it looks like when it's completely natural. When somebody grew up with no insecurities or dilemmas so socially and just know how to connect with people. And you watch it, and the trouble is, those people can't explain how they do it because they never had to solve that problem. It was born solved, basically. They've always just naturally. Now, those same people I've noticed a trend. They're not high achievers. They don't produce great works of art or do well in their business or anything like that. And my girlfriend's such a great example of that. You know, you're not going to see her name in the paper 
but she makes friends so easily that it's annoying for her. She's like, she can't keep up with all of them. You know, she has to be like harsh and like who she spends time with because people just connect to her so easily and she never tries to make a friend ever. She doesn't even really understand what it means to have to try because it's so natural for her. But, you know, in, in our relationship, I'm the achiever one. You know, I'm the one who has to drive us forward and do the progress stuff where she makes sure that we're never short on friends kind of thing. Um, so that's one of the dilemmas when you read books even by people like myself who, who tell you sort of how to make friends, these are the people that treated it like an engineering problem. They're like, how do I solve the calculation of me plus behavior equals popularity? Whereas, yeah, what I'm talking more about, as you say, that kind of meditation approach, this presence thing, where you get to be whatever it's like to be my girlfriend, where she just, you should see her whenever she goes near someone, she just, you can just see this compulsion and she's like, so what are you up to? She can't help but talk to people. She's not trying to do anything. It's just a natural reaction to being near someone. The, the real ironic journey for me is after trying to learn all the best ways to make people like me and make friends and all that sort of stuff, I came in this full circle where I realized the main problem is trying. I just have to stop trying. And I want to give you an example of, of this actually very, very recently, which was two days ago. Uh, two days ago, we had an engagement party, my girlfriend and I, uh, which is interesting for me in Czech because while I have been here for quite a while, we've had such a tumultuous travel-based lifestyle that I haven't really formed any deep friendships with anyone here. And half the people at this party, I didn't even know. They, they, some of them, first time I've ever seen them, which is weird at your own engagement party, you know what I mean? Like to not know who's there and not be able to speak the language that half the people there speak and so on. Um, so... I was in this weird headspace when it started. You know, it had also, her family had been stressing me out a bit. And so I'm at this party, it's supposed to be my party, so I can already feel this pressure on like, you have to make this good because it's your big day sort of thing. You know, that shit that comes on to us. And then there's always people I don't know and it's a bit stressful and I couldn't be feeling more antisocial, you know? I'm like, this is just the worst fucking day to have this thing. But I've been here before and this is the kind of lesson that I'm, I'm hoping you'll be able to pick up is when I notice this happening, I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm putting pressure on myself to make this go well. That's my problem. Cause if I take that away, if this doesn't have to go well, then I'm just the guy standing at a place. That's easy enough to do. I can just stand like that's no problem at all. That's, that's a very easy goal to accomplish. When I'm the guy who has to make this really sociable and enjoy himself and make new friends, all of a sudden this is very difficult. But just standing still, that piece of piss, I've done that a lot. And so I literally, and I've done this quite a few times, I just stopped and I went, okay, this doesn't have to go well. In fact, this could just be an endurance. I will just get through tonight. Even if it means just standing still by myself all night long, it can be a test of my stamina. But pressure to do anything socially, zero. Like I do not have to make any new friends. I don't have to talk to people. I don't have to do anything. I just have to be here. That's it. And if anything else, if someone wants to communicate with me, I'm not going to throw them away. Right? If someone wants to bring something to me, fine. Within, and I'd say about half an hour of me sort of coming to that decision consciously, this kind of let go decision, uh, I was deep in conversation with some new guy I hadn't met. Within half an hour. We just sort of made eyes across the, that sounds very gay, but we just, we just made eyes across the, the food table and he was just like, did that sort of nod thing and I was like, oh, we've met or have I met you? And then we just started talking, turns out he speaks English, bonus. And we spent most of the rest of the night actually communicating because he turned out he's a very sort of bro Joey type guy, you know, we talked about a lot of self-development, really deep shit straight away. I've, I've had this, uh, uh, this effect happen in numerous social situations where I'm all fucked up in my head, all stressed out, lots of pressure and anxiety. And then I just say, I just give up. I'm not running away. I'm just giving up results. I'm giving up doing well. I'm giving up impressing anybody, even myself. I'll just be here. If an opportunity presents itself, I'll take it. I'm not going to try and force it. 
and I'm not going to try and pretend to be anything to make it work. I'm not going to employ any strategies to be more successful. I call it going zero. I'm just going to go to zero. Let the world come to me. So the key to that little sort of more practical strategy is you have to notice when you're not having fun socially. You'll notice it because there's something to notice. When you are just lost in the moment having fun, you won't be thinking. You won't be strategizing. There'll be nothing to catch yourself doing. You can just enjoy the moment. When you catch yourself, this is a moment where you're either going to put heaps of pressure on yourself and build up a picture that socializing isn't fun, it's just full of pain, uh, or you're going to want to run away, like you've said before, you either literally run away or you just turn into this, I don't give a fuck, I'll offend people, I'll push them away, who gives a shit, which is just another form of running away, so kind of running away emotionally. It's a fairly lengthy rant. What are your thoughts on what I've just said there? I, I, think, I think it's... It's a compliment, everything that I've learned. So obviously, because um, it's, it's so similar to everything that you taught in a workshop, what I've learned, um, just they're just different angles. So I, I think it's not a technique or a tact thing. Although there's some merits to keep learning because it, it, it obviously doesn't come naturally for me. Um, um, but what... The, you have given me a pressure releasing valve attached mm -hmm. to the system uh, uh, engineering terms <laughs> 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 you that <know> actually <laughs> that kind of makes it work you, you know what I mean <laughs> that's what I think it is it's like you can be practicing something deliberate like uh, and, and I'm really not against learning techniques and strategies as long as it's designed to help you be more genuine that's the whole point of it is you can make genuine connections. If they're fake, designed to make people like something that you aren't even, it isn't even true about you, then I disagree with them. But it's about that pressure release valve. Like when you're, if you're doing it and you're enjoying it, keep doing it. As soon as you stop enjoying it, I'll tell you actually where I got this from. I got this from a fictional book about ninjutsu. So it's a martial arts thing. And it's, uh, it's about, no, it's not about ninjutsu. So it's about, the, what's the Japanese sword fighting called? Um, Kenjutsu. Yeah, kendo. Kendo. So there was a, yeah, so the samurai, that's what it is. So the samurai will be fighting. And if you're up against somebody who's better than you, and you're right before they're about to strike and you realize you have zero defense for it, like it's inevitable that you're about to die sort of thing. They have this kind of forbidden move, which is called going zero which is you absolutely drop everything you've ever learned about kendo and just react on instinct. So you use no kendo whatsoever in that moment where kendo cannot help you. And it's a similar thing in, in mixed martial arts even. You know, I, I love to watch videos on fight IQ to watch when a guy has been able to read the opponent and then the opponent's fucked because he's been read, you know. He knows when the guard comes down, he just keeps clipping them. The only thing a guy like that can do is stop doing what he normally does. Because if he keeps doing what he normally does, he's going to get knocked out because he's being read. And that's what going zero is all about, is in a, in a situation where everything you know isn't helping you, it's the one situation where you have to drop everything you know. And, and in the book where the, the kendo example, what the guy did is he just threw his sword down, which is one, one thing you're not allowed to do in kendo is let go of your sword. He just threw his sword down and it was so confusing for his opponent that the guy paused. Like, what the fuck is he doing? And that gave him a moment to get away. You know, that was the only thing he could do to save his life. Had he tried to fight at all, the guy would have sliced him open. Now, it's not, <laughs> I don't mean to equate socializing with fighting. It's not a competition. But if you're in a fighting feeling during a socializing, if you feel that conflict, pressure, stress, lots of thinking, lots of strategizing, anxiety, you can't even hear what the other person is saying because you're so busy thinking of something good to say. That moment is we just have to give up everything and go, you know what? No more, no more attempts to be good socially right now. Zero. I will just stand here. The loser loner by himself all night, if that's what it takes. I will make this just a test of my endurance rather than an attempt to be good socially. And it's amazing. It might take a minute. It might take five. It might take 30 for that to just bring those cortisol stress levels down 
release the pressure and make you just go, fuck, I'm just another, I'm just another human, I'm just another primate in a room full of other primates, most of whom are feeling anxious as well. This isn't a big deal. This isn't something I have to do well in. I can just be here. Now, some nights that means nobody will talk to you, but at least you won't go home with this memory of heaps of pressure and stress and pain and have your brain conditioned to think that that's what socializing is. Socializing can be remembered as I didn't make any friends. That's not going to demotivate you. What will demotivate you is the memory of the last time I socialized. It just felt really high stress and anxious. Plus, I didn't get any results. So what the fuck's the point of going through that again? The memory has to be at least, well, I can handle it, whatever it is. Sitting there alone, not talking to anyone, I can handle that. Just watching people, seeing how they behave, learning body language by observation. Fine, let's just do that all night. Ironically, that will make you the most approachable person there. The guy who doesn't give a shit about trying to get anything is the easiest guy to talk to. Like I said, you're not doing anything wrong. And the impression you give me and what I saw at the workshop is you're doing everything right. All the pieces are there. It's just going to be a matter of time before these slowly help you bring out your true self, allow people to see it, allow those people to like you, keep them in your life longer and longer over time. All of that, I think, is naturally going to occur if you just don't demotivate yourself with high pressure. If you're able to go, okay, right now, even though those same things I was doing were fun last night, I'm not having fun tonight with those same things. So I'm going to have to drop the things tonight. I'm just going to have to let go, release the pressure valve. You know, be a friend to yourself before you be a friend to other people. What I'd recommend as homework is actually to write down a list of kind of symptoms to know when you need to release pressure. You know, it might be certain things that you tend to react to, like maybe a rejection or something. The pressure tends to go up, knowing that, okay, if I get rejected, I need to turn pressure off. Just assume that that's probably going to be needed. It might be certain thoughts like, oh no, you know, I'm not making friends quick enough or I'm not being funny enough or whatever. Maybe certain thoughts like that pop up. Or it could just be a sense. For me, it was a sense of going into myself. I'm not listening, paying attention to people properly. I'm just focused on my own thoughts and my own kind of strategies. I'm projecting into the future a lot. I'm worried about what happened in the past a lot. I'm not here, you know. That was my biggest warning sign out. If I'm ever like that, like I was just before our engagement party on the weekend, worried about what just happened and what will happen, I'm like, okay, it's pressure release time, back to zero. It's funny, you can stand there doing nothing, nothing bad happens. Some people might be like, eh, why is that guy standing there by himself? That's fine, you're not going to like throw rocks or anything. You can just stand there, just be this kind of like, like a lighthouse in a storm, you know, you're just still just watching everybody else is around you swirling around and you just be the still thing and realize hey this is completely pain-free nothing bad's happening to me here how do you feel about giving that a bit of a experimental go this week write down write down a list of symptoms whenever i feel the pressure yeah you may even need to do it beforehand like you might have say you're going to a party or going to zoog or something and beforehand, you're like, oh, here's a good chance to make some friends. And you can feel that pressure building up. Like your brain's already asking goals to be achieved and things like that. And mm. it's not, it, you're already sort of, you might notice like, oh, maybe I'm too tired tonight or something. You'll notice excuses start eking in to like get out of a situation. Or you'll mm. just hear this voice saying, you better make something out of tonight. It's a big deal. You can even go zero before you even show up. And say, so, look, just go there for the minimum amount of time and then leave. That's the maximum that's required of you. I'm already under pressure. I know that doesn't help. So let's just go there with no pressure. If tonight all I do is show up, dance, go home, so be it. That's better than A, staying home doing nothing, or B, going there stressing myself out and not enjoying it. Third option, that's neither ends of the extremes. You know, it's not totally not giving a fuck, and it's not giving too much of a fuck. That's great. Well, it's really encouraging because it's new light. I'm excited to share that one with you, man, because that was so huge for me. You know, I realized after a long time, like, I can talk to people. I can connect and make friends. All I need to do is be honest and then let them be honest in return, listen to them carefully. It's not actually a hard thing to do. What's hard 
is what I do to myself in those situations. Fucking pressure to achieve something. It just wrecks everything for me. Like I have to be really good at something quickly or my high pressure thing will just destroy that thing for me before I even get a chance to know if I like it, you know? Great example. So with dancing, I was quite good quite quickly. So I was able to enjoy it right from the beginning. But when I went and tried out jujitsu, I got my ass handed to me so much and so much pressure came on to be better than I was, even though I'm like brand new and I'm going up against like intermediate guys, never wrestled before I'm getting my ass kicked. But I had to tap out so many times that the pressure demon in me was just like, that's your best go on your first go. Oh my God, you fucking suck at this and blah, blah, blah. And so I didn't stick with it. Even as I talk about it, I, I really got to get back into it because I probably would enjoy it if I didn't have to do well at it. And I think the same applies to social. We have the exact opposite. Well, I think I don't actually have that problem in Zook. Like, I was just like, okay, well, this is actually kind of fun because I'm just laughing at myself the whole time, just cracking myself, just like, oh my God, I'm doing these moves. And I, I am actually twerking. I was just like, what am I doing? <laughs> Uh, so I didn't have that problem, but like what you said about the the whole uh, what you said about communication is the exact same thing that I had that I don't have when I'm wrestling with someone, because mm -hmm. I like I kind of grew up knowing that I'm like at least half the time I'm up against guy that is one and a half time my size, right? So my attempt was never to like win in strength. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, at some point, I will find a way to outsmart. But I kind of know that I'm going to lose. Like from, uh, I, I know I'm going to at least lose 10 times before, before I'll find out one smart way to outmaneuver this guy that is one and a half times twice that <laughs> size. So I never had that issue. So, uh, so that's probably why that I'm having fun. Or maybe probably because... I'm lucky enough that when I was forced to do it, I was kind of forced to do it when I was a teenager. Uh, I came here and um, as an exchange student and my host family, the father was a Kiwi, but the mother was Japanese. And so I was kind of forced to do it because the dojo was actually inside the house. Mm -hmm. And he taught me well with the ethics of it of sportsmanship so i never had that issue but that same uh, problem about wrestling that you have i have even with communicating i'm getting better at it um communicating with um other men yeah this especially in a competitive ish um group dog pack hierarchy sort of environment um whether or not in conversation i'm going to achieve in a way to where that um when i am leading a project or someone else is leading a project mm. and um I, I i see that in myself and i see that in conversation between the higher ups talking to each other um it actually takes nobility for the older men to not have the slightest of like kind of scrabbling with each other who's the boss when they're in front of us the younger guys yeah because it's really hard to identify who is the top of the pack being the leader in that sort of situation and i am aware of myself when it's outside of work in a friendship situation that can kick in but that could be a conversation for another time or whatever but you know what i mean well yeah. i think this is a great thing to keep in mind is to understand how i view the social situation with jiu-jitsu with wrestling is how you view say communication at a party or in another social event with other men it shows you how subjective this is because when we reverse it the way you feel wrestling i feel at a party right so it's just subjective it's all in your head and the funny thing is it's transferable there is a way for you to transfer the way you view communicating with others through wrestling 
to communicating with others through words. It's actually very much the same thing. Body language and language, it's all language. And I have to do the same thing. So I can learn from you. When I go to rest and I'll be like, okay, I am definitely going to be the worst here. So that's not the problem. I just need to go and then, you know, let's go learn from all these guys who are better than me. I'm surrounded by teachers right now. Now I go in with that perspective, having to tap out every 15 seconds isn't going to feel like a dismal failure. It's going to be an inevitable consequence. I want you to try this with socializing, which is you're going to be socializing with people who are one and a half times bigger than you socializing. It's that same thing. That comes more naturally to them. They're whatever. They're more skilled or experienced. Whatever you want to say that says, okay, I'm not going to win this. That's, that's not even a thing, which ironically it really isn't. There is no winning in socializing. But it's the same thing. There really isn't any winning in wrestling either. I mean, you can make a competition of it, but it's just about training and practice and fun, right? Like they don't keep score when you're training. So I want you to do that when you're socializing. If you're a zoo, just, just talk to people until you have to tap out, you know? And they win kind of thing. And that's, that's inevitable. You're going to tap out. It'll just be how long can you stay in? How, how, how many different things can you try? Can you come at it from another angle than you usually do? And then when you have to tap out, you tap out. When you have to take that pressure off, you go, okay, this is becoming hard work now. I feel like I'm having to try. Just go, okay, I'm good. Put it this way, if you've gotten to the point where you're feeling like you're under pressure, then you must have made progress. You must have been doing something. That feeling come up. So you're all good. Man. You're all good to tap out now. Just like me in wrestling, if I'm tapping out, it means I'm actually wrestling a guy. That's so much better than staying home going, I wish I was wrestling, you know? So I might be losing the match, but I'm winning in terms of doing what I should be doing with my life. I want you to keep that in mind when you're socializing. Just being there is the progress. Time served is what's going to make this thing work for you. So tap out whenever you want, whenever it's getting unenjoyable. And then you can go back in for another round once you've had a rest. You can literally go stand on the side, like bench yourself, gather yourself, and then go, okay, I'm ready for another I'm ready for another bout, you know, and then you go. Let's see, let's see how that goes for you. Just that little, like you say, a compliment to what you're already doing. A little pressure release valve. Let's see how that affects your accountability. You know, let's see, we'll try that sort of counterintuitive. The thing to make you want to do it is to not try and make yourself do it. Show up so you can do it, but no further pressure to continue. Just do what you feel like doing once you show up. See how that goes and we'll check back in maybe in a couple of days or we'll give you a chance to like put this to the test. A couple of days? You have the time. Well, maybe, yeah, we'll see a few days. What, what, what I want is to see this put into action. I want you to be in a situation yeah. where you have to use this thing. Yeah, yeah well, tomorrow is Zook. Perfect. And then um, Thursday will be wrestling. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... Um, uh, um, I'm trying to like go out every weekend at least once mm -hmm. with my mates or like go and meet some new people at least once. Every... Oh, actually, yeah, I did last week and that was fun playing, just playing music. Um, that was fun. Um, yeah, but anyway, like I, yeah, yeah, I, I will and I'll report back. Alrighty. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thank you, bro. I enjoyed this conversation and uh... really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very optimistic for you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to Ronald for sharing so vulnerably on the call. Hope you guys all got something out of it. If you enjoyed that, feel free to share it around and, of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed that enough to think, Dan, maybe I want a coaching session for myself, simply get in touch, dan at brojo.co.nz, and I'll send you a form to fill out to see if we're a good match for a complimentary introductory coaching session. Thanks again. See you next time.